Hey, two things will happen in this video. One, we will look at the design approach from a more general perspective and things you might want to avoid when you start a new design and you could do instead. And the second thing is we will look at Galapagos and try to see if we can use it in an early design stage to optimize a massing model for our tiny project. In the beginning, there was nothing. You see, every writer, artist, painter, musician, architect, filmmaker, photographer, in fact, anyone in the creative industry faces the same problem. How to get from nothing to something. And yes, we can all learn about sun studies and 3D modeling and how to create the coolest visual with the latest real-time render engine. But that is not design. These are important skills and tools to uh, manifest your idea. Don't make the mistake of thinking that 3D modeling and uh, creating images with AI is designing. The most important aspect of designing is the idea and the story to sell the idea. Let's talk about ideas. And of course, we will look at some of our beloved gadgets. For instance, we will use Galapagos later in the video. But let's use a simple but real project to tackle the first problem. How to get from nothing to something. I stumbled over this competition and thought it's the perfect opportunity to discuss everything we learned and more on a real but small project. And don't be fooled by small. A small project doesn't mean it's less complex. But obviously it's about it's about uh, designing a tiny house. So let's go. Okay, just go on Pinterest and uh, just go on Pinterest and look for some tiny house. Mm -hmm. They look all quite cool. So let's we could start to model maybe. Let's start to model. No, sorry, that might get us somewhere, but um, only maybe. And it might look cool, but maybe not. And how to um, justify the design without any story? Because what's the story? <laughs> Remember what I said about story? The most important aspect of designing is the idea and the story to sell the idea. Well, every project, every story, and this is not all. Every story needs a good problem or a bad problem, <laughs> a problem. Every story needs a problem. Think about it. You don't believe me? Get your favorite book or favorite movie and you will see that the hero will be introduced pretty much at the beginning. And so is the problem. As a designer, it's a really good idea to identify the key problem of the project and make this the theme of the project. That automatically creates a story arc and where you can fit in all the small little problems in between. We could call these constraints and some of them normally come with a brief. So the client will probably give you a brief. A brief will tell you the initial goal of the project, but probably also the constraints like budget constraints. If you don't get a brief, you should create your own. That should contain all the goals of the project and all the constraints of the project. These could be budget, cultural issues, uh, physical uh, limitations, and so on. I think the more constraints you can identify, the better. And the goal, of course, if you want the hero to succeed at the end, and that is your goal. That's the goal of the project, to, to solve the key issues. Your hero could be the person who lives in that space. In our case, it's the tiny house. There, I can already imagine a lot of constraints, especially space. It's called tiny. And that brings me to another problem. How can we record all our thoughts and constraints and sketches and, and, and so on? A word to reference images. Reference images are not bad, but they will not solve your problem. They, however, are important when it comes to the aesthetics of a project. Then, of course, they are very important, but they will not solve your initial key issue. There's not a right or wrong when it comes to collecting all the information. In the past, I used loads of different ways on how to collect. As a, as a student, mostly in my on paper, 
in the past often just uh, in folders on the computer. Uh, nowadays I, I use uh, Miro, but there are, there are thousands of other ways you could do that. It's up to you, but it would be good to think about it. Where do you want to save your stuff? Yeah, as I said, I like to use Miro. Miro, although I'm using the free version, it's still super useful. I'm the board owner at the moment, but you can work uh, in teams. That's the first advantage. I can add here all kinds of things. Um, I can add text, I can add frames, which I later can um, display as, as a presentation. I can import reference images from just Google or any other uh, location on my on my desktop. But yeah, I just show you quickly, copy, paste. So I could find um, reference images, just place them here. I could also connect, connect comments with pictures um, or have post-it notes. They can have different colors and I can link them. Basically, I can create mind maps and um, can, can present these later on. And if I would have collaborators, they could see what I'm doing. I could write them notes, messages, can add more stuff here. There are all kinds of apps you could import especially if you have a paid version again i'm using the free version and it's totally enough for this project now design brief i look at this um at the brief of this competition a bit more closer and gathered all the information to start my design and i have here two lists first is my constraints sorry these are not uh super organized but you should get the point so there are some constraints which are which are important uh, to mention first of all the square feet or square meter i because this is a as a us competition it's all in feet and inches and, and so on i'm i'm used to work in meter and i want to use meter so i i translated here some stuff some items were not in the brief which i added for example the ceiling height the minimum ceiling height in the US for a tiny house is specified with six feet and eight inches, for example. Mirror is great for sketching as well, um, because I can immediately just sketch here with a drawing pad and think of what is the, what's my initial idea for the massing. Can imagine that I have not just one volume in, in that tiny house. I have maybe two or three. I have a main space, which is probably kitchen and working space. I can always also move this whole thing if it doesn't fit. And I'm just sketching very simple. On top, I might have a sleeping space. And um, on one side, I'm thinking to have a double height, double height space, dining area, working area. Maybe it's openable. This could be my addition. My initial idea of three different massing. Now I could I could look at my constraints as parameters for later on for Rhino, which we will jump right in in a moment. You could understand that, that for example here I have I have a minimum requirement for my lower space, a minimum height requirement. So that's almost like a fixed a fixed parameter. The height of the upper sleeping area is also fixed because of the maximum headroom of bridges. And this one is fixed because it follows the others. Then I have um, a fixed value of, for the width because we want to max out the space, of course. That follows the fixed width of the trailer. And they are pretty much all the same, I guess. And then the length is variable. Also, this length is a variable. Variable. First of all, we want to reach a 300 square meter. That is like... Um, what is required or they say at maximum 300 square meter but of course we want to try to reach that we try to have the biggest space possible of course and this requires some thinking of how how wide is this versus the kitchen or toilet space and the sleeping area and of course we could go into detail and see okay we need at least that amount of space for toilet for kitchen and so on we want to be as large as possible within all the constraints and requirements. And yeah, we can jump into a Rhino. What we could tr do ourselves is to just to model boxes and just try try to solve the problem manually. But it's just cooler to use uh, Galapagos to just automatically try to optimize it. Again, we have, um, so if we look at that again, we have certain constraints we need to uh, consider. First of all, we have the minimum ceiling height of the space 
below we have a sleeping area which has also a limited ceiling height because of the maximum headroom of the bridge of bridges and then we have a third volume which follows the other two first let's have a, an origin that's our origin i'm gonna put the bifocals here call this origin and we can specify a point we can just place it here zero 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 that's my origin and i have these people here just to have a representation of their size okay i have my point what we want to do is we want to build boxes but from surfaces from so we can measure the area so i would start with probably using planes there's this option here plane surface that's seems to me the best option here i can use the surface base point here i'm gonna put it here and um and i could um, specify the plane by a width so this is going to be my first volume a width is now i need to check my mirror board because i forgot the sizes so the trailers are eight feet wide eight feet 2.4 meters 2.4 so that is my width so it automatically puts the value from 0 to 20 to 2.4 and this is um this slider is we could also just put a a panel because it's we will will not change that really let's let's do that instead this is a fixed value which we're not we're not touching and we have a length that we don't know because we we we're gonna have two volumes next to each other and we want to think about it a bit more in detail so let's have a range here we could say maximum is 10 i think that's okay and minimum is zero all right minimum won't be zero so we could actually give it a range already we could give it a maximum a minimum which is let's say two two meters it's my minimum for that space then we extrude we extrude this to a volume and we use the set unit <coughs> to define the direction set uh, vector sorry and we know that we have a height restriction of we have a maximum sorry a minimum height for the lower space and that is going to be here it's not going to be seven meters it's going to be go back here um ceiling height minimum is six feet and eight inches that's 203 centimeter so we could go here we could actually set this again as a fixed value because that doesn't change and i just um i just rounded a bit so we have oh let's say it like this Okay, this is actually four. I rounded a bit and I add this here. I can change the name here. So, so thinking about this could be my kitchen, uh, toilet and so on. So in, in, that, in that volume. And here you see, okay, we have one variable. This is the, the length. Two fixed values. One is the width, one is the ceiling height. And then uh, one variable length, one, one variable for the length. So that's something we can then uh, use later in Galapagos. Now the second volume on top of it, we, we can use the same here. We can use the same tools here. Let's just copy these. So this is my kitchen. Now at the moment it's on the wrong spot. So the initial point we're using here, we need to shift it's because our 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 sleeping area starts at at the top of that volume so how could we do that we could just move a geometry which is the point by the same by the same vector as the extrusion height extrusion direction and height and that gives us the gives us the second uh, point we can add this actually to our add the group then we have this in here the width is the same the ceiling height uh, is not the same the ceiling height is is lower because we have a certain we have the maximum head headroom for the bridge and that is 4 4.11 meter so let's say 4.1 so we could either just um, create another panel here and say we could do it manually or automatic i just do it manually because it's a value that doesn't change anymore um, this is the, the ceiling height and then there's something wrong with the ceiling height i think 4.1 minus 2.03 so we need to be careful here because this the ceiling height for the upper level um is limited by the maximum headroom for bridges 
and although we could now if we would calculate that uh, we would actually get a similar height for the upper level but we haven't considered the height of the trailer so the trailer also has a certain level here you can see a section from a different project you have um, here 24 inch leading up to the this is the height of the um, trailer platform the 24 inch and then you have 29 inch which is at the area where you have the tire cap or the, the wheel frame actually so that these are the things to consider for now we don't think about don't worry about the wheel well we can look at that later in another video this now is really just to get a sense of the envelope but we need to consider this the 24 inch so that means um, we have the maximum head height the maximum headroom for the bridge minus the minimum height for the internal the ground level space minus 24 inch oh my god 24 inch in centimeters is 60 60.9 so 61 minus now we get to a much more uh, realistic height which is 1 point 1 point 46 meters so that is the ceiling of the sleeping area so that goes into here now that makes more sense just to recap we have our origin point they belong to both volumes. We have our kitchen or kitchen workspace with the width, which is um, defined by the trailer. We have the, the ceiling height as a fixed value. And we also have the ceiling height of the sleeping area. And to move the volume, we just link that to the ceiling height to move the origin point of the second volume upwards. So it's always fixed to this. So even though we change that, let's say change it to one, then it will still be, um, still follows uh, the same, the volume. And the length is also fixed here because it's, I want this to stack on top of each other. So um, we can call this different length of kitchen and sleeping. Now we could um, get all these and make us the third volume. This is our third volume. We can also move the, um, we need to move the origin, but we need to move it according to the length of the, of the kitchen. So that's just a different, um, in that case, it's the set value. Oh, sorry, the, the X value. X unit, I think so. I'm not sure. Okay, let's, so we put this here. We put this into here. Oh, no, that was the wrong one. So now we moved our origin the same length as our kitchen and sleeping room in this direction and we added this volume on that side now we don't need anymore we don't need to move it upwards that's we we don't need to do we, we just um we actually need to use this as an input hoppala sorry this is so wrong so we move this volume along the y-axis the same length as the as our sleeping room and this can also change right so this is changing and currently the the length is also a link to that but we need a separate length this is the length of the dining space okay we can place this in here and now we have we can change that separately this doesn't change anymore and the height is really just um, the ceiling height and the sleeping height panel together so we could just um, addition use an addition and place this in here because these are fixed so that should work we already set here originally we set uh, a limit to two meter and i think it's good because always think of how much space you would need for a table or something like that but we can discuss that later now currently it's just important that we set up a script which helps us to adjust our massing and now we have these spaces sleeping okay now i need to change that here dining dining and yeah it looks good so these are all set and maybe it doesn't have maybe at the end this might be different it, that maybe it's lower and we have a window out of the sleeping area maybe we have balcony here that could be also the case but we could think of options later on for now it's just important that we get the volume right we want to max out the volume but we also want to and we want to max out the square meter. So that's what we're actually calculating. How to get the square meter of all of them together is, we just uh, go here, square meter, just looking for, no, sorry, area. 
and since we don't check the volume we don't uh, want to um, calculate the volume we want to calculate the, the, the square meter because that's the target as you can remember we have 300 we have 300 no sorry we have 300 square feet but um, our area is in in square meter it's 27.8 square meter that that's what we want to achieve so we can put it here reminder 27.8 square meter that's what we want to this is the maximum we sh we we shouldn't go over that that's in the brief but we also want to achieve it that's what that's our goal and f to in order to calculate the area we just go here and look at the plane put this in here and that gives us the area so the, the kitchen has 11 so has the opera also has 11 and and the dining area has 5.7 and we don't really need that um i just want to take a mass addition here <laughs> we're pretty close that's very funny um that's not what i intended <laughs> i want to play a bit around um of course now if i change that here you see we are we are above the, the value and if i change that um so what are the other constraints is actually the width the length of the the length of the trailers i found this here this another um image this actually shows it in meet in, in millimeter which i will use right away so the different trailer types the trailer length and of course we can play with that but it shows me that there are certain lengths and that's i think it's important to um to consider because we want to of course if we have a certain length of a trailer we want to max out the length and maybe of course uh if we want to have like a terrace maybe that's the not within but better is probably that our volume sits on top of it and covers everything we could start here with the, with the smallest 8400 now in order to define the length of the different volumes we might want to con we might want to change how we look at the length of the third volume so for example if this is my maximum length 8400 then probably try to reflect that in in here this is the length of the dining space here we just give it a number but we could also say for example trailer trailer length is eight meters and 40 centimeters that's the trailer length according to this the smallest one here now we could take this and subtract 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 take this and subtract this one so now we have only one slider we actually defines everything really and it's not necessarily a good thing but we could now take um let's take take the area and, and adjust it to our needs right we could do that we end up with quite a small area here on top in the kitchen and then this room becomes really big of course then we can also then change the trail length uh, and see how that turns out maybe we um use a different length here according to the trailer size um, so for example here we would have 9 meter 60 9 meter 60 remember that the area is a requirement so so in a way that doesn't make sense that would that would be the result of what Galapagos would would come to get to as well so 8.4 let's go back and now we could increase that here again that would mean that it would be better to have a smaller trailer so i would just show you very quickly how that works with um, galapagos you can place galapagos here and we could um, add our, our slider here galapagos controls this slider and we'll try to optimize the output the 28 this is this is the fitness we're looking for right now if we if we go in here this is the solver and we have some options here we could say we want to limit the amount of iterations it has with the runtime limit and uh, we there are different solvers in here which we could try um and here's ma minimum minimum and maximum so we could so if we run that now it will try to maximize this number here just start
as you can see here it made this um, pretty long the dining area and then the kitchen and so on quite small it's something not quite right okay so if we go here we're gonna see okay now the area we we reached is 51 what if we use the the minimum minimize it doesn't really change much because you already found it you know I found the minimum I can actually stop that the minimum would be now 24 square meter another way and this is probably a better way and let's just first fix our visuals here because I don't like how that looks like um it would be much nicer if this is a bit looks a bit better and I will just um, copy my settings here so this is just a very simple way to illustrate directly from grasshopper place this in here my box I can actually hide this because it's just uh, adds a bit of a problem but it, it's nice because it also adds the shadow can give it a color it's this is just a custom preview a material a color and a transparency that's that's all and I can do the same here with this and I also want to turn off this volumes here turn off this this now this is, can give it another color I also want to hide this origin point I don't like that and the area mark and uh, we can also give the last box a color so let's do this a material and a color green for example what is better is to give to choose um, a certain range of the dining space and the length of the sleeping area so for example my bed on the sleeping area is two meters long at least I could um, say for example here my minimum is is more than two meters at least or let's start with the dining area the dining area I would say it should be not more than three meters I really want the main space is the kitchen and the sleeping area. dining space or recreational space is can be smaller maybe just uh is has a maximum has a limit and we could define that we say the minimum here is at least three meter and the maximum is four so then we have a range here so we have a range between three and four meters or let's say 4.5 and that is our that's our um slider for the dining area value and we could do the same for the length of the sleeping room but now we already have this is pretty much set so there's no way to to make it bigger or smaller and but we could um, we could also set here minimum we could say the minimum here is at least or maybe four it's four minimum is four and the maximum can be of course bigger um, now instead of like having just one slider we could we could attach two sliders with um, shift I can add another slider here and the addition the mass addition which goes to the to the area we we calculating the area we can go again here and you see that if we now click then it's again the same it's like the minimum and there are different solvers by the way but let's use the first solver use the evolutionary solver now you see it actually started to shift This was trying to minimize the area of course we could do that ourselves because we know this is like you cannot go lower than these numbers these are the our minimums but you could also um, instead of minimum or maximum you can also actually put the number in here so we could say we want to have we want to reach 24.7 with 28.7 this is our no so, sorry 27.8 that's what we want to achieve now if we run this it's gonna be different Yeah, and it found a, seems like it found a solution. The trailer length is probably now something different. Now we could check um, the length. If we add these here, it's 11.58. So that would mean quite a bigger a trailer. So it's like, actually it's even too, too long. So we could also um, work in a different way. We could say, can we look at something else? Can we look at... Um, the maximum length of that so instead of like using the fitness of the the area we could um, specify here the length of the of the trailer so for example here 4.8 uh, or sorry um, 8.4 this is the fitness that's what we want to reach so we cannot um, go over and we could run that
Now we could check our area. Of course it's quite small, so we could uh, increase that. What is the next uh, size? It's uh, 9.6. 9.6. Now you see it's changing it again. What it basically does, it tests different, tests different numbers, trying to reach the number 9.6. I think you get the point. This could go much more sophisticated, especially if I have more volumes. It's also here the pity that I can only always just uh, search for one fitness. I can only define one fitness which the, all the sliders need to basically work towards. But, I mean, it has a really um, interesting applications. I will, in the next video, probably try to use Octopus because Octopus allows for multi-objective search and optimization. So it allows for, hey, can you optimize my area plus restricting the length of my object? All right, so far for this first video. Yeah, in the next video, I will try to use Galap uh, Octopus. It's probably easier for me. I'm not a math genius, but I... I hope you get the point that, hey, let's look at the constraints first to really build, um, to think about the idea and the story we want to tell. And one of the main constraints of a tiny building is the space. Yeah, I hope you liked that first video of the new series and see you next time. <laughs>